I'm pleased to welcome our next guest and recipient of the VFW Distinguished Service Medal and Citation in recognition of his many years of dedicated service to the VFW. Jerry Newberry joined the Army in 1968 and he served in the 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam where he earned his VFW eligibility. He is currently a Gold Legacy Life member of VFW Post 2492 in Mlay City, Michigan. And prior to beginning his employment with the VFW as Director of Communication and Public Affairs in 2001, Jerry was employed by a member of the U.S. House of Representatives and worked as an investigative reporter and newspaper columnist and as a speech, an op-ed writer for the former, for former Secretary of the VA. Jerry's genuine concern for America's veterans, his interest in bringing veterans' issues to the mainstream, and his ability to capture and convey the truth behind these issues served the VFW well during his many years of employment. He embedded with the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, reporting on the situation from the front lines of the war through both pictorial and written series, and also on the airways as the host of VFW's radio show, The National Defense. He was responsible for implementing many new and successful communication initiatives as technology quickly evolved and the popularity of mobile devices and social platforms exploded during his tenure as communications director. Further, serving as primary spokesman for the VFW, Jerry always upheld the integrity of the organization and made clear our commitment to veterans, our commitment to service members and their families was above all else. In September of 2012, Jerry was appointed as Assistant Adjutant General, a position he held until his retirement in July 2016. He has left indelible mark on our organization, and I wish him all the best in his years of retirement. Please join me in honoring Jerry Newberry with the Distinguished Service Medal and Citation. Adjutant. Distinguished Service Medal and Citation awarded to Jerry Newberry. In lasting appreciation and spirited recognition of his many years of stalwart service to the veterans of foreign wars of the United States, as Director of Communications and Public Affairs, then as Assistant Adjutant General, his genuine concern for America's veterans, service members, and their families, along with his steadfast commitment to the VFW mission and the integrity with which he fulfilled his roles have earned him the utmost respect and appreciation of the organization. In witness whereof, we have unto set our hands and the official seal of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States this 25th day of July, 2017. Signed by Brian Duffy, Commander in Chief, and Robert E. Wallace, Adjutant General. Morning, comrades. It's good to be here with you today. And uh, first of all, I want to thank Bob Kreider uh, for getting all the tears out of the way, because uh, I was afraid I'd come up here and be emotional, but uh, he took care of that. I'd like to thank the uh, national officers, the uh, line officers, national council members, and uh, all the good comrades for uh, allowing me to be here today. Um, there's a lot of people I'd like to thank, but I know I'd leave someone out, so yeah, I'm not gonna go down the list. But I wanna especially thank the national staff in Kansas City. Uh, these people do tremendous work, and uh, this convention is testament to that. You all show up. And uh, you don't have much to do except to show up and go to the meetings, but there's a million moving parts behind this convention, and uh, those employees work for months, long hours, like you wouldn't believe. And uh, I, I love them all. Our Washington office, uh, Jerry Menar, uh, I, I just want to echo his remarks. We've got a tremendous legislative staff uh, veteran service officers, those people are in the trenches every day working on behalf of our veterans. And uh, VFW is first and foremost when it comes to service work, and we all should be proud of that. 
I want to, uh, most importantly, there, there's a couple people I, I will point out. Uh, Gunnar Kent, uh, who I had the pleasure of uh, working for when he was Adjutant General, and uh, John Hamilton. Uh, they mentored me and uh, demonstrated uh, some leadership that we needed as an organization. But most of all, I'd like to thank them for their friendship. Uh, at 12th floor in Kansas City, uh, Diane Puthoff, Susan Ernest, Betty Frankie, uh, Randy Lover, communication staff. It's a, it's a long list of people, but thanks to all of them. I want to, uh, I have to thank my daughters. <clears throat> um, I spent a lot of years away from home, uh, pounding the drum, fighting the battle, slaying windmills, and I, uh, I missed a lot of things as they were growing up. And uh, like most fathers, I have regrets about that. But uh, they've grown up to be fine young women. They love our veterans and they love our country, so at least I was able to do that right. And I'm very proud of them. Uh, the VFW has offered me a lot of opportunities. Um, I cut my teeth as a young soldier in Ashaw Valley and later on in the war during the Easter Offensive as a MACV provisional team leader in uh, Quantree. And I served along some of the finest people that you could ever meet in the world. And Joining the VFW, I've served along some of the finest people you could ever find in the world. When I came home from Vietnam, like a lot of people, I was uh, angry, frustrated, feeling kind of isolated and lost. And uh, I got involved because the dark days after Vietnam, that's what I call them, dark days after Vietnam. Uh, when we were fighting the battle to get compensation for Agent Orange, to get the illnesses recognized from a exposure to Agent Orange. PTSD was something that people never heard of. You said PTSD, they didn't know what the hell you were talking about. And at that time in Congress, most of the people didn't care. So I started fighting that fight along with thousands of other veterans, and especially the VFW. Because the VFW has brought justice. They brought care, they brought compensation to those who have deserved it most, to those who have earned it. It didn't stop with Vietnam. As Vietnam veterans, we were determined that the new generation of troop, of soldier, of Marine, would not come home and be refused treatment or have the public turn a blind eye to their needs. And we've succeeded in doing that. So you all need to be very proud. Don't ever think that you're irrelevant or you don't matter, because you do. The VFW is that wall. That's the wall that's defending. You're the, you're the last defense for our men and women who have served in, mili in the military. Because if you think that Congress is going to always do the right thing, well, hell, you know that's not true. We wouldn't be sitting here today if that was true. So always stand proud. Always stand firm. Never acquiesce and never bend a knee when it comes to to the needs of our veterans. I spoke of the opportunities the VFW has given me. Uh, I mentioned the national staff. The hard thing about retirement has been the vacuum that was created by not working alongside those people every day. Uh, they were my VFW family, and I miss them, and I'm glad to be here to see them again. One thing the VFW afforded me opportunity to do was in bed with our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan several times. 
I embedded with, fortunately, the 101st in Tikrit, Mosul, which I'm sure you've heard of, uh, a couple of other places whose names I can't even pronounce. In Afghanistan, I served with uh, 101st and 10th Mountain Division, embedded with them in uh, Patika Province, uh, a couple of other places, but uh, the Korangal Valley. And I'd like to mention the uh, men and women who served with attack company 132 Infantry in the Korangal. Uh, a long time ago, I, I, you know, when I left Vietnam, I never thought I'd be helping to carry young men off the battlefield again who were wounded or killed. But that happened in the Korangal, and those brave, brave souls who served there uh, were in it every day. So any recognition I have today is dedicated to them, to the men and women I served with throughout the years, our national staff, and to all of you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless America.